Hey, good evening, everyone. This is Ranger Rob, and welcome to the Ranger Rob Country Living Podcast with our lovely guests, Amy from Dragonfly Farms and Dale Wiley from Backyard Prepper, uh, the Backyard Prepper. <laughs> Where'd you get that? I'm not. Before. Am I not lovely, too? <laughs> You're lovely. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not. Don't you'd even look, go there. <laughs> you'd look better with a hat, especially a black one. Especially when it says Ranger Rob Country. Well, I see. Yeah, I'll see if I can. I, <laughs> the, the part of that problem is, is my, you know, my dad was a no hat the house kind of a guy. Oh and really? Yeah, my dad. Oh too. yeah, no. Oh no. He, 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 if I come, if I even come close to the dinner table with a hat on, oh, there was hell to pay. And therefore, I've just not been able to get into it's like a hat like now. Uh, when I grew up, I wouldn't let. Well, when my kids were in school and stuff, I wouldn't let them wear shorts ever. <laughs> no. <laughs> and the other kids are wearing them. All that stuff is like you're not going to school with shorts on. I don't care what the kids huh? say. <laughs> this is That's what they do. Things they just can't do. <laughs> it's, it's just wrong. So before we get going, I want to remind everybody you can find our show on Spreaker and iHeartRadio and Spotify and a whole bunch of other things I can't remember. And also you go in the description below, you also see links to where you can find our stuff and and uh yeah. And <laughs> so there. Uh, we also are syndicated somewhere. I can't remember where now. And uh, so, yeah, um, all good. So today's subject is an interesting one. And this one could get a little personal in a way, but at the same time, it's designed to kind of make you think. Because Amy and I, we were talking just before the show. Uh, we always talk about Dale when he's gone. Um, good, good. <laughs> anyway, uh, so with it, we're thinking it's like, Okay, we all are hearing strongly, I don't know if, unless somebody's living under a rock, that by August, things could really be ugly, whether it's fuel, power. And then we're talking like blackouts. It's like, is that even possible? So you have to ask yourself, it's like you hear this stuff, and it's like, do you prepare? Do you maybe do a couple of extra things? Do you buy it? Sherry and I were just talking about buying a power supply generator um just okay. to have for little things and it's like but it's like if we had little blackouts and stuff it's like we'd get through it just fine but every once in a while you want to use your you know a crock pot or something throw it on a little generator things like that so you know but do you is that extreme is that thinking you know the warnings are clear and and, and it's coming from more than one source even the regular media is saying it and it's like and you don't really see it that much on the store shelves yet. You're starting to see gas pushing six bucks for diesel, at least here and up there. Where you got there? <laughs> that looks like a, That's the beekeeping supplies at Coastal. Really? Wow. Be, at yeah. Coastal? Wow. This is, this is the boots at Coastal. I oh, can't hold cool. this thing. You're yeah, the right. place... The place was a. <clears throat> there's your socks. Stock up on socks, people. Wow. That was at Coastal too. Yeah, this is all at Coastal, and these twenty five percent and thirty forty percent tags off. They're on every every bit of useless merchandise they should have never had in the store anyway, and they're just trying to get rid of it. So, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah that yeah. place. That place. I've heard. Destroyed. I've heard several times like Walmart's and stuff like that is, is. The useless items, the you know, the luxury oh. stuff is just sitting there. No, it's the stuff was sitting there. And you know, you mentioned the uh, the electrical thing and everything else. My electricians, who, whose name and number I will never reveal because he's hard enough to get to work on my stuff and everything. But he called <laughs> me back because I called it yeah, after about a week. He calls me back and we we're talking about the whole house generator type of a thing. And he had just based upon that little outage we had out here, he's already had four calls for people wanting to put these uh, interlock switches in and everything that's going to switch you over to generator. So you can switch over to generator and everything. I said, well, just put me on the list and yep. everything. I'm going to do it anyway. And I'm still chasing down a generator and everything. Um, you know, it's one of those things you're, you're right. Ranger Rob, we could make it by, but you know, if you can afford it and, and you're in a situation where you need it, now is probably the time to do something like that. I think. Yeah. It's this, uh, I did get that. I did get that master switch thing put on our house, and I'm really glad yeah. I did. I had it put on our well too, so I could run that separately and a generator too. 
I mean, I think that's the first step you do. Just go ahead and get that thing set up and then, you know, worry about the general. I got a couple of generators around here now, smaller stuff and everything else. But I, you know, and it was interesting because I thought, oh, I'm going to put a whole house generator on it. 8,000 kilowatt and everything. I'm going to run my furnace and my air conditioner and I'm going to be just fine. You know, my electrician, he set me straight real fast. Me too. You know, and, and says the heat and the AC is not happening, dude. Nope. He says you'll be able to power, uh, you know, some of your, your freezers and, and your refrigerator and your hot water and some of that stuff. But he says, you best be putting a pellet stove or something like that. In. It, it, it ain't going to run that. That's what we did. <laughs> yeah. You know, so yeah, that's, so that's on the list. So, I mean, now I'm writing, you know, new project lists, new things to do here just when <laughs> I want to start going to fishing. Never and stuff. That's, well, that's one of the reasons, you know, we just bought our pellet stove last year, by the way. And the only reason I didn't go wood stove, my son's got a wood stove, but he's also young. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I am no. not going to go outside back chopping wood. It's no, just, I've I'm, done I, I've done great. the firewood. Now I've done the firewood thing as well. That's not happening. Uh, you know the pellet biomass. It's fairly readily available. I guess if it doesn't, then we'll convert the pellet stove over or something like that. But yeah, no, not not doing firewood. Right. Um, so yeah. So uh, anyway, it was just kind of an interesting conversation Amy and I were having. It's just like uh, it's like how it's like. You, are you an idiot by saying uh, things will be fine, we'll get by, yeah. or are you an idiot of ignoring it and just going on with life, and then all of a sudden, surprise, seven dollars a gallon, and pretty soon nothing's on the shelf, just odds and ends, you know? And um, you know, I don't know what's the, I don't know what the right answer is. You did, you did you see that six twenty dollar and twenty nine cent a gallon diesel in Terrebonne yeah. there today? Yep. Yeah. 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 So. And I, in fact, I'm not driving my truck unless I have to now. Um, but uh, it's just sitting there and it's low on fuel and I need to fill it up. And it's going to cost me 150, <laughs> 160 bucks. I'm going to read that a lot. So, yeah, that's going to make me cry. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't. So, Amy and your family, are you guys like, I've asked you kind of this before, but it keeps getting that closer and closer. It's like, are you guys changing your ways at all? Or are you guys uh, doing things or considering new things that might help you get through rough times? Um, and and my answer is the same, but stronger than it was before. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, hay for the livestock is always a huge concern because we don't grow that here on our property. So we're looking more intently and, and that is one of our top priorities that we're planning for. Um, but, but what you said, I think it makes you an idiot if you put your head in the sand and think it won't happen to me. Yep. It's not going to be that bad. I don't think preparing in any sense or any level is a waste. Yep. Preparation not is not a waste. What You're well prepared. What, you know, what could go wrong if you're well prepared? <laughs> What's the worst case scenario? You use up your preps. I mean. Yeah. And we, we rotate through ours all the time. So um, that thing of when people, if you are talking, you know, when, for those who are prepping and understand what you need to do, but you really should rotate your preps so you don't have long-term things. And Sherry and I have actually gotten really good at that. So I'm actually really proud of us that we're rotating our stock and stuff. And it, and it also kind of tells you like, well, you need to know how much you got left of stuff. Like for example, we always buy beans, 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 beans. And so we make ch chilies. Like we always have the beans, beans, beans. But we get caught off guard. It's like, where's the chili sauce? <laughs> and it's like, we didn't have any. And it's like, uh oh, I slipped up because I usually I'll keep two or three bottles or something like that around. Uh, you don't have to go extreme. I'm not talking about buy a case, but, sure. um, you, you know, but uh, it's always good to be touching your preps, going through your preps. And then times have changed between when I first started prepping before to now, things that were important to me back then now are not so important. <laughs> so going through your preps is important. Uh, so I do want to push yeah, that on. But. Absolutely knowing where they are. And, and, and really, uh, you know, Diane has ours in spreadsheet, believe it or not. And she adds oh, to know. it. You know, we went out today and then the granddaughter that lives here, she, she's in charge of maintaining the counts and, you know whether she whether it needs to be done or not. Diane sends her in there every couple of days to, <clears throat> count, <clears throat> excuse me, count the inventory and some other stuff just as part of, you know, her education and everything like that. But 
yeah, I mean, today, you know, I saw uh, barbecue sauce, dollar forty nine. Well, I grabbed three bottles, you know, that'll last, you know, for a while, you know. But no, like Amy says, anything you do, and right now, that's all you, you should be doing is just adding and adding to that. <clears throat> because if you see this cycle we're in, the last time we hit a 30% increase in diesel fuel, what's going to follow that? What's immediately going to follow that in the next 10 days? It's going to be another round of increases in food supplies because of distribution costs. And I'll throw this one out at you just so people understand how this works. And in our area, there's not major warehouses or distribution centers. This stuff's all coming over from the I-5 corridor and everything. So we were on our way back from the valley yesterday. And I, I know this happens all the time and everything coming across 22 there, which was absolutely the lightest traffic I've ever seen on that highway in the 40 years I've been driving. It was it was almost eerie. Um, kind of. Anyway, the, the Cisco and the U.S. food trucks that service the institutions and the restaurant industries, they go over, uh, they come over in the morning from Wilsonville, um, deliver stuff around here. Then the guys take the trailers back and they, they load them up. And so there was four, um, four Cisco trucks and three U.S. Um, foods trucks. Uh, and I just ran some quick calculations. That was worth about 230 tons of food that come over here every day from the valley like that. Um, you know, and right now the cost three weeks ago, four weeks ago, maybe a month ago, it was about $1,900 a round trip, uh, just, just for the truck and the, and the trucking. That's no profit or anything. Happened. But you think about that, <laughs> that that's a hundred, 220 pound tons of, fu of food a day and everything. So multiply that's, that's, you know, well over a thousand tons of food every five days coming over here. So you can just imagine what, uh, you know, is going to happen with the cost of those goods. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah. It's just so hard it was, to comprehend. It's like, is it is it actually going to happen? And where we're going to like, truckers are going to say we're not doing it, or we're we're going to limit our trips over to the what you know, east side here and uh, deliver us because of, of cost. You know, it's like we're going to see a depletion. Oh no, they'll, they'll keep they'll keep coming. You know, I mean, I was in the trucking business for a long time. When that's when your bread and butter is coming from the trucks, you got to keep them rolling and everything. And, and you just have to hope that you can recover your costs. So, I mean, it's it's extremely inflationary. Um, you know, I mean, a 50 cent a gallon increase, I, I've got a spreadsheet somewhere that would tell me, you know, what that translates into, um, you know, for a cost of operating my trucks and everything like that. And that's what you need to know, because if you're not updating that and adjusting your cost with either surcharges or, you know, just contract work, um, you know, stuff's going to get real expensive real soon. It's just... <laughs> It's not looking good, in my opinion. Therefore, I think anything you buy right now, you're money ahead. I mean, if you see another 10% increase in food prices, why wait? Just go out and buy it yeah, now if like, you can afford it. Like, we've been buying Butcher Box for quite a while now. for quite, And so I've got a good supply of steaks. I buy my steaks that way. Well, the service was 149 a month. It's gone up to 169 Not surprised. Mm -hmm. But I look at the steak, and, and I was just in there uh, getting hamburger out the, for making chili tonight, and I got <laughs> tons of steak in there uh, and beef, and I'm going, uh, what an investment, because I paid a lot less money for a lot of that mm -hmm. food I already bought. So it's really odd to think and start thinking that food is an investment. And so uh, I've actually changed my way of thinking with food. Um, uh, in the last year or so, that it actually is a commodity that's worth buying back then, heavy duty, because now it's twice as much money, and that's like I've got an investment in my freezer. So, well, sure, and if you you know, and I mean, if the market corrects itself, which it's not going to, you can short the market with all that stuff, you know, <laughs> like like that, um, you know, and I mean, if your food price is going up ten percent, I mean, it's just. You know, you're beating the rate of inflation because, you know, which are, you know, bogus numbers anyway and everything, but you're well up there in that 16, 18, 20 percent range. And so if you can save that much, you know, and I know not everybody's in the situation. It's different than anybody's situations. But, you know, right right now, I would buy as much as I could possibly afford and and just have it there because it's if it gets more expensive, your dollar just buys less, much less. And I you know, I would think that this would translate into Amy and I seeing increased plant sales of people coming, 
you know, to the market wanting to do this. But it's not. It's not. And it's not even happening. We're just seeing the onesies and twosies go out the door and everything else like that. So, you know, we're going to run, we're going to try and, and uh, we're going to run a little bit of a special on ours this weekend. We're going to discount after a certain level number of plants have been bought, mainly because we got the inventory to do it. And I just want to see if people will actually buy more, if they can pay less for it or for what. Um, yeah. You know, because it, it anything you spend right now is just. And I walked through the store with Diane today, which I don't normally do, and, and was just watching the prices and this and that. And um, you, you can find pretty good deals out there if you're shopping right, but you got to pay attention. You just can't be, and, and especially <laughs> the silly packaged and processed foods and everything else like that, especially on the organic side of those things. Um, you know, it, there's just no economy of scale there, but people are still buying stuff. Yeah. So, uh, go ahead. Well, I was, it really stuck with me what you were talking about, Rob, about changing the way you think yep. about what you buy, about what you're spending your money on. You know, we talked last week about what subscriptions, you know, are you, you got Netflix, Hulu, cable, satellite, you know, thinking about where your money's going and, and retraining your brain that anything you buy is an investment. And just like Dale said, I, I mentioned to Dustin this week, I said, do people not understand that this is food? I'm growing food and then you go home and you put it in your ground and now you have food. I don't think people are understanding that this is food. Well, yeah. they don't because they can still go down to the store and get anything they need with zero effort on their part other than pushing a debit card across the counter to it. And, yeah. you know, and I, Diane and I said, no, we're not, we're not going to, yeah, we've changed the cropping plans and everything else here a bunch of different times. And then after we were being down at the arch, they got a nice little food pantry down there and everything. And so I go, you know, I says, I, I, with the way we change the cropping, we have more room. I just plant potatoes and onions and anything else. If I don't use them, I'm taking them down there to the senior center. And, you know, they can have them in their food pantry and everything. And, you know, and Rob has, has seen my place. He knows it's not huge. We can grow a lot of stuff on a pretty small plot here and everything. And, and people talk about, oh, this is like the old victory garden concept. No, it's not like the victory garden concept because then you couldn't get a damn thing in the stores that you needed. You had yeah, to come up with, every, absolutely, it was just not there. And so if you wanted to eat, you had to grow a garden and everything. We're not to that point yet. And unfortunately, I think by the time that we get to that point, we're going to be in the winter sometime and there's not going to be a lot of options to do this. So. Um, you know, if you haven't really started, you know, growing the stuff right now, um, forget the seeds. You better come buy stuff from me and Amy and get that garden growing. And, you know, and you can probably, you're not going to stall it off, but you can probably at least get yourself. My thing is, I think you can grow 30% of the vegetables that you would eat or something like this. Can you preserve that many? You know, and so, I mean, there's lots of different processes that are involved here. You know, and we're just we're just not there with the majority of the public. But there again, you know, only 30 percent of the public are doing anything close to what we are um, and probably not even close to what we are. They're just kind of aware of what's going on in the situation and everything is starting to prepare for it. And until you can't they can't get it in the stores, it's not a problem. Yeah. So with, that, uh, with the less comment we got here from uh, um, is it Aiden? Is that how you say it? Aiden McLeod. Yeah. That's Thanks, Aiden. Good. Appreciate that. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. I mean, how much effort do you want to put into this thing? Okay. I mean, Rob and I are a couple of old guys. We're still kicking along here, you know, pretty good producing food <laughs> and everything else like that. I mean, like, and, give us know, a little pat in the back. Yeah, so I yeah, do want to, I want to take her lead here and, and take sure. the conversation to kind of what was on my uh, thumbnail. So, and, and it's a combination of just what she brought up was the fact of how much effort do people want to put into this. So if by f August, by fall, things really get ugly and, and we're starting to see some real, uh, I, I'm if I'm picturing anything, little... Uh, uh, Instability. Yeah, but I mean, when it comes to inventory in the stores where there just flat out won't be some things there, there'll be stuff in the stores and we'll, you know, get by okay but um uh, you know when it comes to anything kind of special whatever that stuff um i actually think the fruits and vegetables will actually be easier to find than the instant stuff people are always looking for because they just don't know how to cook so uh, 
Uh, that's one thing. But my point is, is like, okay, so it starts getting tough. You can, maybe you don't have the money to pay for $8 a gallon or whatever. If it actually did that, that's my other thing. It's like, is it really going to do that or not? So if it did, though, then for these Plan people, for like I have neighbors now that I know don't proper do grow anything, mm -hmm. and they know what we're doing over here. And it's like if things got tough and they couldn't get food and stuff, would they arrogantly come over here and say, can you give us some food? We know you're growing food here and we're, we we can't get lettuce anywhere and stuff. And, and, and people start changing their tones a little bit. And, and so uh, they start demanding that since you're growing it, then you should share it with the community and stuff. Um, so then you get into family, you get into friends, you get into all that stuff like You've been working all these years to take care of who you want to take care of. And in my case, I'm been trying to take care of my family. Uh, for those that I've been trying to create a community with, uh, I would not hesitate to share a darn thing. And like us three, we've created a community. So, I, and what we're finding out is what our strong points and weak points are. So we can work off of that. So I may get to next year, I'll say, Amy, we're going to grow. You can see what we can do with spinach. We'll do spinach. How about you do carrots and something else and we'll trade. And so you fill in the places that you're really good at and I'll fill in the spots I'm really good at. And then, uh, uh, you know, all of us to just coordinate and instead of all trying to focus on different crops, we actually start um, working together. Like, you know, if Dale was really nailing it with potatoes. Let him do the potatoes. <laughs> I'll focus on corn, um, things like that. So, but the thing is, are we going to get to that point where people are going to be demanding from us to feed them? Uh, are they going to, or do we have to start putting our foot down and say, I'm sorry? Or do we create care packages? Or do we meet them with an a AR-15? You know, how bad could this get? You, you, you got multiple scenarios there and i think he could go into you know many more of those multiple scenarios and you have to be secure in your own preps first you have to understand you know make sure you're taken care of and your family's taken care of and, and if you're able to extend uh you know consideration to the other people then then do but never do it at the expense of your own preps or your or your own family situation um you know i'll do it right up to you know i belong to a group and we call it within the length of our cable so if you can do it do it uh, if you can't, then, you know, it, it's apparently not going to be the right thing. Uh, in my particular situation, yeah, I have one neighbor and we have a relationship uh, and he's probably more serious about this than I am a little bit farther under the table about it. Um, but we know where each other's coming from and he'll, his group is going to be getting some plants from me and everything as well to help them out. Um, you know, and then I've got a couple other neighbors that, yeah, that's... Um, there, is there any takeout places on the ranch, you know, type of thing? <laughs> and, and, and so that's probably, you know, and not nobody's coming up and demanding food for me. I mean, it's just not going to happen. And you have to be able to put yourself in this kind of a mindset and everything and, and look at everything that's involved with it, the totality of it, just accept the fact that this is the way it's going to be. Nobody's taking my stuff. Nobody's demanding. I will assist you within everything that I can do within that I'm able to without in, impinging my family or anything else. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're not going there. That's for sure. Yeah. I think the problem is, is a, uh, uh, especially meeting Amy and her family and stuff. I, I, it's, it's, you have to be able to know what your enemies are doing. I'll just say that in war. Yeah. So you got to learn how to think evil, but you don't want to be yep. evil. And so sometimes all of us have a hard time, like even even in business, when I had other, there are things that people did in some businesses, I couldn't even comprehend people had that mentality to do that. But the thing is, there is, and there's a lot of them. So when things get tough, um, can we imagine, I'll just use that word, can we imagine to have a good defensive posture to handle the situation that could come up in the future and it and it sounds like it's could be even be within this year uh as crazy as the reports are but let's once again do you re, do you take the report serious or not but are you you got the backbone to say stand up for your family when things get tough 
when someone comes to your gate and says, we know you got food back there. <laughs> stay on the other stay on the other side of the gate and we're all good type of thing. <laughs> you know, I mean, if that's the attitude they want to take and everything else like that. And you do, you have to train yourself. You have to be able to flip a switch now and then and go from the nice homesteader uh, that's trying to work and build community and everything else. And if you have somebody coming in from the outside that wants to disrupt that process and we have to deal with them appropriately and at, at the correct level and everything so that they don't disrupt our process anymore and the choice will be theirs as to, as to which way it goes. Yeah. I, I agree with Dale. Um, you know, the Bible talks about being, you know, as wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Yep. Yeah. And, and it also talks about being in the world, but not of the world. So to, to be a nice good neighbor doesn't mean that you let people walk all over you nope. and there's so many verses in the bible that get twisted nope. about being submissive and letting people walk all, all over you and taking advantage of you that's not what the good book <laughs> says at all at all I totally agree you know? so so i i do not think that any of us are called to you know well i'll open the gate for you take whatever you want absolutely not no not happening. even down to the base level of um when we're looking at what we're planting and we oh we're gonna have a lot of extra tomatoes amy you could take them to market and i said if if we have extra because just like both of you said family comes first first you take care of you know if you take care of things at home and again it goes back to mindset take care of what's at home but Sure, certainly not. We're we're not to uh, just roll over and take it, and and it really comes back to mindset is being not looking forward to the apocalypse where you have to defend your property, but being mentally pre prepared that you would if you had yeah. to. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And that that's I mean, what's going to be how, lacking in a lot of people too. How many people? Uh, how many times have you heard? Especially those of senior garden. Of course, I get tours over. I give tours over here, so I'm the worst. And they go, "Wow, things get tough." I know where I'm coming. <laughs> yeah, well, you need they, at that point in time. You know, I had a couple people say that to me, and I go, "Choose how you do that very carefully and everything." You know, and I mean, if it was a friend joking one thing or another, you know, but I mean, in amongst us, uh, you know, I mean, I've got more tomatoes than I can possibly use, so I'm going to plant them out here in, in the garden and let them grow and if, you know if amy can take them to market i mean come get them type of thing you know and that's how you build these communities and it's just like you know somebody doesn't nobody has the right to come uninvited you know into your your world uh, and, and everything and if you if you show a tolerance or weakness and, and this is going back i've been through criminal psychology i was a loss prevention agent for a number of years and, and everything and um you know people People are good at reading people like that. So you need to read me and my body language and how I'm looking and talking to you as well, you know, and understand where this could possibly go. You know, choice again is, is all yours, <laughs> you know, in these situations. But um, that is going to be, because if you look at it, I mean, we, I throw out that 70%, 30% number. 30% of us are semi-prepared, 70 are. Those are not good odds. We need to make sure everything's in our favor. Yeah. yeah, I was um, Sherry and I. I don't know why we're in the conversation today, but we're talking about the generators today. But I was also telling her I watched a report today of a company in Arizona that has created these panels, which uses solar a little bit, but they they accumulate water from the air, and they can actually accumulate up to two gallons of water a day. And it's like, and in fact, the water is so clean and pure that they actually have to add minerals to it so it'll have that normal taste to you wow. <laughs> anyway so and it's the price is actually i think for the two units that you would need to get that kind of stuff you it, it's a let's say five to six thousand dollars to do it you put it on your roof and the whole works and it's like so sherry and i were talking about water and it's like of course i told you we have a backup system on our well so we could put a individual generator just on the well itself and literally water an entire property um and uh, and fill up our water tanks and all that stuff. So the one thing we don't have is people talk about these blue 55 gallon storage things for water. Well, then you guys have the same problem I do is where do you store those? Do you put them in a garage that can get up to 80 degrees every day? 
uh, you know, wintertime's not really that big a problem unless they, unless oh, it freezes. Yes, it is. Oh, oh no, <laughs> it is free. a big problem. Yeah. It is a so, big problem. And then the problem also, I'm going to let you guys talk on this in a minute, uh, is you use those tanks, you put water in it because I got all the water I want. I could fill those right now. And uh, uh, you seal them, maybe put some water conditioner in there and stuff. And do you have the same problem you have with plastic bottles and stuff? Does the water start tasting bad? Do you have to rotate those barrels? I am once again, I'm going to let you guys talk about it. Um, or what's a good way to have backup water, even though I have the capability of pumping all the water I want, as long as I have a generator, it works. So, uh, um, so I'll, t I'll let you take it from there. I'll let Dale start because I know you've dealt with the with the barrels. Yeah, the barrel thing, you know, and this is interesting. It comes up because I was out in the garden the other day and I, I get my drip irrigation all set up and everything else like this. And I look around and I go, what would I do if I completely lost my uh, s delivered water supply here? I don't have a well or anything like Rob does. I'm not going to drill one and everything. And so what would I do? I'd have to immediately prioritize what lived and died, uh, you know, in the garden and, and and what we're growing here. Um, and so you talk about those barrels. I have a barrel and, and I put it down here in the shed, 55 gallon barrel. And, and back in that cold weather, that thing became like a 400, 500 pound ice cube. It was just froze solid uh, and it wouldn't matter. Yeah, it, it was useless, completely useless. I had tape on it and everything, but there's no way the tape can generate that. They've got to be in a heated area that's not going to get under, you know, cold, cold freezing temperatures. I'm not too worried about 80 degree water. I'm worried about frozen water and everything. Um, and so I wanted to get some, so I got that one and we'll come up with some kind of an idea. And I went, I brought some five gallon containers up in the house so that we've got the immediate, you know, one or two day supply, bare minimum type of a supply. Those, uh, they're not a blue barrel. They're an orange barrel down at Wilco. $35 for one of those with a spigot on the bottom and everything. And I didn't look at my rain gauge, but I, I imagine we had close to an inch of rain over the last couple hours here and everything. And I got this big old flat roof on the greenhouse. I should have caught at least 55 gallons of water uh, and everything and, you know, use it for watering or use it for drinking or something. Relatively small investment. So that got added to the project list here too today. Yeah, it's like uh, me, I've got my concerns of my hydroponics. It's like, yeah. uh, luckily, some of it's low wattage and stuff. So uh, uh, that's why I was looking at the generator thing. That's the lithium battery generator, not the gas, where uh, if our power was off for a day or so, can can one of those keep my Dutch buckets running, um, which I think it could, because um, I think it's I only think so. a 60-watt motor that only runs five times a day for 10 minutes. So... Uh, uh, I think something like that, I could actually hook up my hydroponics to it and actually continue working until the power came back on. Uh, but yeah, I've got all these new questions. I don't know why, where the heck they came from, but it's because of the reports coming out. And so um, what is, how are people going to react? Are people taking the rep reports seriously? All these things are going through my head. So I don't have the answer. I'm actually bringing the discussion up to our listeners. And in the comments, by the way, please, uh, even though you may not be catching the show, hear your comments. Are you more concerned? Are you taking the reports seriously? Could it be as bad as they say it's going to get? Could get in the fall? Um, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff. And by the way, uh, for those of you who are new to our show, Dale goes in and out a lot. <laughs> He resets his internet and he'll come pop it back in. Last last week was really interesting. I got kicked out. I'm using Chrome today. I'm seeing if it works better. But uh, anyway, but uh, uh, I don't know. I just feel like there's so many reports out there, and it's coming from not just just Fox News. It's coming from Blaze. It's coming from even our regular news of of stuff. But they're not. Um, and some of them sound really severe, and people are reporting problems with the transportation and shortages and, and things like that. And it's like, if you took it serious now and prepared for it, um, well, that's weird. How do you do that? <laughs> there he's back. <laughs> You're doing ghostly things on my software here. Well, yeah, you, you guys, you freeze up. And... Yeah, no yeah. problem. We got this tandem. <laughs> it's better last week. I got kicked out. You guys did the show by yeah. yourself. I was kind of funny. Um, but anyways, I'm still, it's like, 
gosh, how serious do we take this stuff? Because some of it sounds pretty darn serious. <laughs> I, mean, I think we take this as serious can't comprehend as, our, it. as our health ahead. and our life and our family depends upon it. I'm not willing to risk the fact if I am wrong and none of this stuff happens, you know, every one of you can tell me what a moron I was six months from now and I'll smile and say, yeah, we're fine. We're all good. Uh, you know, but, but if not, then, um, and, and people will say that. I'm, I'm sure they've said it to every one of us. They look at us and they go, you guys just... You know, you're really way overreacting to it. And I go, well, no, I'm, I'm thinking I'm kind of underreacting right now. I'm not where I'd like to be in this situation, uh, but I'm going to keep on the path that I'm going. Uh, there, there, you know, everything that I'm buying as far as the prep and food and everything else I could use uh, somewhere down the road or I can trade, I can order whatever uh, type of thing. But I, I am dead ass serious about everything uh, that I'm doing right now with this. Uh, and I think everybody should be, you know, like there again, 70, 30, you know, we're 30 percent. We're probably 10 percent of the 30 percent, uh, you know, that actually gives a damn and the 10 percent that are preparing for it. So, yeah. So have any of you guys considered buying a Berkey filter system? Got one. I've heard of it. No, they're an awesome. They're an awesome filter. My son had one and had it over uh, when we all lived over in the valley. And, you know, that's pretty much all surface water over there, so it all has to be treated. And if you stepped in the shower, the chlorine smell would almost knock you right out of there. And I wouldn't drink that stuff, you know. And even for the Berkey, we'd filter for cooking and, and everything else like that. I definitely think there's a deal. I've got I've got half a dozen, maybe more of those life straws around. I've got them, you know, in my bags and everything else like that. You need to have some level of that because every, every now and then, I mean, you see me probably got the emails. You know, oh, we had a water main break. We had possible cross contamination. So you're going to have to not drink this water. You know, you're going to have to process it or something like that. It usually clears within a day uh, type of a situation, but you got to be able to cover that. I was going to. No. Um, I stopped in that. Um, I, I meant to. Okay. A second. Let, let it roll here. Oh. Um, they've even got, they've got, they've got countertop ones too. There you go. Yeah. yeah you can. You can get them in different sizes, and they're quite. You're looking at three, four hundred bucks. This yeah. one's four hundred. Uh, that's the big one, but uh, they're extremely uh, uh, a very good water filter. And so, uh, Sherry and I, I don't know why we spent money, you know, a lot of money on some of the systems we have already, and yet we still have not bought one of these things. And we're getting closer to making making the decision to do it, but yeah. Um, well, I think what you're showing here, Rob, and I think what the people, and you know, I'll kind of, I'll just quickly explain how, oh shit, the power just blooped again. Um, you guys still there? Yeah, well, I'm not getting anything. Yeah, we're gonna refresh.
Hi. <laughs> I know we had a power outage. Yeah, same here. Wow. Yep. Uh, yeah, we're back. Uh, I don't know. If, <laughs> oh, there's Dale. <laughs> Did you get a power outage at your place too? Yeah, just had a blip and everything went crazy after that. Yeah, well, for those, uh, we still get six online. So thank yeah. you very much, people. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, we don't just never know what's going to happen. Yeah, I, I was saying something, and of course, like the old man I am, just don't have a clue what it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah. uh, we, on to something else. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we probably beat the heck out of that last one. For those of you who are watching or still with us, thank you for your patience. Uh, we uh, sounds like it, almost all of us had a glitch in their power here, which shut down my uh, my Starlinks, which takes a couple of minutes to relink up. So uh, we're back. So great. Thanks, people. Uh, yeah, the number dropped a little bit, but it's coming back. So we're here. Uh, we just do the best we can. So we were talking about some very interesting uh, uh, subjects like, uh, for example, uh, uh, what do we do if it's people want our stuff and all of that stuff. But I think what we're all coming down to is we're doing the best we can for our families and our friends that we consider or community that we want to be involved with. And uh, But we do, at times, have to think. Uh, I love the way that uh, Amy worded it, but you got to think what an evil person would think about, um, yep. even though you don't want to be that kind of person. So uh, be a step ahead of the of the game and play the scenarios out, and because uh, you know, it all comes down to protecting our families. But uh, do you but know if why you have that a community, is... have a community too, we can protect each other. Yeah. Do you know why that is so hard to do, Rob? What you just said, because <laughs> basically the three of us are good people. We simply don't have that thought train in our mind. That's just not how we think. So we don't understand, and so. You almost got to convince yourself, you know, I got to kind of flip a switch, become a dirt bag here for just a little bit <laughs> yeah. and, and everything. And, you know, that my daughter is a sheriff officer, you know, and I know people. And I, I've been around that type of thing. So I've got a little better idea as to how that is. But, yeah, we simply don't understand how that mindset thinks. And so, you, you know, if they want to come get your stuff, you know, that's a crazy idea. Are they, you know, do they know what they're coming up against here. Well, that's going to be their choice and everything else like that. But you kind of got to think like, I mean, you know, I just. I have a hard time doing that. And until I could get myself in the mindset of thinking like that, uh, I was unable to have any kind of a counter to it at all. Yeah, yeah. I think being in business a lot and having my own businesses and stuff taught me how to start playing scenarios in my head of what yeah. people could possibly do to me. And when you're in business, I, I tell you, I've seen some ugly things. I just thought people would, didn't even have the could even do what they did you know, morality or ethically but they did it and it's like okay i just learned something the hard way <laughs> well you got to look at that and it's like you know if they're going to play that game you know you've got to look at that and say okay uh, i'm not going to play the same game as you are but i've got to you know i've got to defend my position myself or the situation that i'm in here and everything else and if that's the way you're going to look at it then i'm going to say well what's you know what's this dirt bag going to do what's the lowest possible dirty handed underhanded thing this person could do and just be prepared for it if something you know if it happens it happens if it doesn't then, then we're a little bit better off for it and that's just the mindset people don't have because i don't you know i don't know where it's going to go and everything but i i just you know it's kind of like my hat i could reach over here and pull one of our scenarios out of the hat and see you know what problem we've got to deal with right now oh amy's never everything. played that game okay look i'll get the hat Let's here just hang on yeah Get okay, while, while he gets the hat, on a lighter note, it like from a mom point of view, I, I want to caution people not to panic and sit at their gate with their shotgun. But what we could do is get to know your neighbors. You know, the weekend's coming up. If you see them out there, you know, us, especially those of us with people who border our properties, do you know who's over the fence at your place? Yeah. You know, I think if I was a bad guy, I would be less likely to rob somebody I knew the first name of than a total stranger that I knew had uh, preps that I needed. So, so on a, like from a mom point of view, um, with a little bit less panic, 
get to know your neighbors. Just say hi mm-hmm. this weekend. Ask them how they're doing. How, hey, have you been having trouble filling your gas? Like, how's this all going for you? Have you seen the grocery store? Like, it's crazy. Yep. Just start a conversation with your and, neighbors. And, and you need to and realize that every conversation that you have, you're just feeling each other out. You're just trying to figure out what's going on. You're giving up nothing. You're, you're doing this with a smile on your face, you know, a genuine concern for these people. You know, but I mean, you've got to have the backup plan as the stuff goes wrong. You know, and my my other, one neighbor, him and I are equally prepared, probably. Uh, we're pretty good. The, you know, the other two, not so much and, and everything. But I mean, that's their choice. You, you, you know, so Amy, the hat. We have, we have. Yes. So the, he's got a hat of scenarios. And we have uh, yeah, yeah, a hat So, so yeah, my nice. Nice. We're all obligated to comment whatever it could be a good yeah. problem or a bad and problem. Now, there, these are not, and the majority of these I would call problems, but there are some blessings in here as well. And so if we pick a blessing, then we, we're glad for it. And then, you know, we go on to something else, but I'll pull one out here to see what it's all about our game. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is, this is, this is kind of dated. It says you have not ordered your spring seeds yet and your usual suppliers are unsure if they could fill your order. What are you going to do? Do you have enough seeds? House. Well, okay, that's fine because I have enough seed. I have enough, easily have enough seeds for the next two to three years right now and everything. And so I Which brings I'm, up a good point. Actually, I'm glad you did, pulled that one is I have not been good and nor have I even done it. Save seeds. And I need to start changing my ways. I think I, I am, I'm, I'm going in. I'm, I'm, you know, I pro- I'm not going to go down to Wilco or any place else. I'll probably go to one of my suppliers, Territorial or something. The only way I'll go to Wilco or Biomart is if they actually discount them down a little bit. That makes sense. I haven't seen that happening yet because I don't think the seed suppliers are going to allow that. I think they're going to pull this inventory back in and hang on to it, which is, hasn't been done. In the past. But I think their inflow of seeds into their facilities is going to be a little bit compromised. So I am going to go ahead. You know, I'm going to order up corn, probably a pound, you know, uh, tomatoes, this kind of stuff, lettuce. I, I'm ordering it all up. This stuff lasts forever, and everything. If it says, if the package says it'll last till 2023, that means it'll last to 2043 if you treat it right and yeah. everything, seal it and everything else like that. So I'm going all in. Um, you know, obviously I'm not going to grow that many, so I'll, I'll have barter trade material, you know, or sale material down the road. Um, that's what I was going to do because I looked at that. It's kind of interesting. We have, yeah, I've done this for a while. And everything to see what uh, you know that would do, but to me right now that that's going to be one of the important things. It, people are putting out these heirloom packs of seeds and everything else like this. They're selling them for huge amounts of money, and they're nothing but pure crap. They're just junk. You know, buy these things individually from a good seed supplier. Uh, seal them up in mason jars or something like that. Stuff them, you know, in a cool, dark place. Or I've got them in the laundry room underneath the counter. Uh, type of a thing, and I'll probably package, probably seal some up and throw them at the bottom of my closet because um, it, it yeah, could we, get tough. We have a large inventory of, of seeds, uh, and we order all of ours online from all the different companies. Yeah. Just to get my my jet setters, I had to get them from Tomatoes, Totally Tomatoes, and they're the only ones that have that seed and stuff. But we, we buy a lot from all kinds of good seed companies, and we have a big library of seeds that we've had for uh, this going on in the second year but i haven't saved seeds uh, amy do you guys save seeds over there yeah and that's something we did even where we lived before is what i grow and mostly i was doing it i started doing it from flowers um the the really pretty petunias that um are striped or kind of have galaxy spots on them yeah yeah, yeah. Those I, was, are cool. I was buying them from the store because i couldn't find the seeds like buying the plant and then when it would go to seed, I would save the seeds from it so I could that's grow hard, more. That's hardcore, Amy. The tunes are one of the smallest seeds. They're a big pain in the ass to deal with. And they're and sticky. Yeah, they are. But no, it, it's certain things I do. You know, you got to watch hybridized stuff and everything. Because, yeah. you know, I saved, I saved some marigold seeds this year and I reseeded them up quite a bit. I was pretty impressed. I probably came, I probably came under 3% or maybe even 2% going you know true to one side of the hybrid and everything so that, that was pretty good but you know like Mary, uh, dill that's another easy one you know for for seasoning and everything and corn all these things you could save you know the corns are usually hybrids so i mean that's not worth it a lot of the tomatoes are too but i mean 
virtually everything else out there, uh, you know, you can do that, do that with. Um, the stuff, you know, the burpees and everything else like that, people think, oh, that's great. That's a brand name and everything else. No, that, that stuff ain't that great. Um, you know, they might put the same seed in and put a different picture on the package and everything like that. But, you know, I learned that over the years of farming and everything. You just, seed's not that expensive. So get the good stuff. Yeah. Well, uh, well so, well, let's try another one out of your hat before we run out of time. Okay. We'll grab another one here and see what we get. I got to make sure it's not too horribly dark. Huh. This is extremely appropriate uh, for what we're talking about here. Okay. You, you're not going to believe this. One. Unknown persons come to your door at night, bypassing your external security warning systems. What do you do? <laughs> well, uh, Luckily, I have two big dogs. That really helps. <laughs> okay, I mean, you know, when you bring that point up, okay, and everything, and, and my first point on this thing, and this is designed to stimulate thought, is how the hell did they get to your door before you knew about it? You know, type of thing. Okay, Rob's dogs are going to bark. I got a couple of grand dogs running around here. They bark at everything. But I also have alarms down my driveway, and I have cameras down at the end of my driveway. I'm on the corners of my house, uh, both for the front and the back. Uh, I'm probably going to spring for some kind of a cellular camera here uh, just to use for different things. I, I want the advantage. I want to know if somebody's coming up my driveway. I got 500 feet to figure out what I'm going to do in that time period. And I've still got the advantage on them and everything else like that. So if they get to the door, there's been a huge mistake made already is the thing I want people to understand that they've That's gotten true. that far far in my security and I'm just reacting to it now because then I'm at a complete total disadvantage. You know, I've got to react to what they're doing, not the other way around. This has actually happened to me before, not when oh, we lived me. here, yeah, but where we lived before. And at the time my husband was working graveyard shift. So mm. like worst possible case scenario, right? And um, so again, from like a woman's standpoint, if you have a car alarm, turn on your panic yeah. alarm on your car. Number two, turn on all the lights in the house. But before that, if you practice your Second Amendment right, that's the first thing you should have done is arm yeah. yourself. Have that turn in your hand light, right now. <laughs> use your panic alarm on your car. And now security cameras, one. like Dale said, when this happened, it actually happened twice to us, unfortunately. Like, what are the odds, right? Two different people they gathered up the security cameras on their way down the driveway one of them did go off and it gave us a heads up but the next morning we found the security cameras down the road in the ditch wow. and so arm I, yourself I, turn on the panic alarm on your car turn on all the lights then you call 911 where we lived before and again here you're rural how long is it going to take for the yeah. sheriff to get there in my case it was 40 minutes i sat mm -hmm. on the phone armed watching the person out the window waiting for the sheriff to show up and that, that you know that's that's part of community building too because over in the, you know over in the valley where we lived um there was you know there's four of us old guys around there retired semi-retired type of a thing and there's a couple of young moms in the neighborhood and everything. Most of them, my kids knew them, therefore I knew them and everything else. They had all four of the old men's phone numbers in their phones and everything else. And when the crazy guy comes down beating on their door, the first thing they do is call the four crazy old men in the neighborhood and then call the sheriff. <laughs> and the four no, crazy old men go down there and convince this scumbag he should move his ass on down the road, which he did willingly because he didn't want to mess with four grumpy old men, one of them was pretty liquored up too. So, you know, hey guys, I'm gonna that's have to cut you short. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, time went so back. guys, uh, this, I actually want to follow this, some of the subject up on the next show. Uh, it seems like every week we've had some kind of little technical thing, but I think the point to the whole thing is we're out in the rural, out in the country area. And so it's harder to do live streams and stuff. But that's the good thing about we're out here, and so we can tell you what's going on and what we're trying to do. So uh, uh, if you're getting really good uh, internet and great streams from people, they're probably in the city anyway, and that's not really where we want to hear from. So, guys, we got to move it on. Uh, I went too long. So, guys, I want to thank you for watching, and please uh, make sure you say hi in the comments, and goodbye, everybody. Bye.
Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.